Um, good morning to you all. You are welcome once again to our Wasi History TV for today's uh, lessons and discussion. Today we have a very special update on uh, a video that I did on the origin of the Bantu somewhere last year. And I'm glad to see that that video has been, of course, one of our most watched videos so far. And um, we have almost uh, 1.7 views. And thank you for, for that. But I must also say that that video generated a whole lot of uh, controversies concerning the origin of the Bantu people. And I had quite uh, important people who were knowledgeable about the Bantus, uh, having to give some, you know, traditions with regards to the origin of the Bantu. And I, I promised that I was going to do a video, an update on some of the things that were said and a little of course research that I also did concerning the origin of the Bantu. And so today I'm here to give you a little uh, update on the origin of the Bantu. But before we, we, we begin, I must also say that uh, to remind you to, re to, of course, subscribe to the page and also recommend it to your friends if you have not done so. Before I even begin with the discussion, we must bear in mind that the history of the Bantu, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's very scarce in the sense that the available information on the history of the Bantu are mostly from archaeological source and 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 that makes it quite very difficult uh, uh, you know you have a lot of origins a lot of traditions a lot of people coming in with their own uh, tradition and so it's not that easy uh, reconstructing history from the archaeological uh, point of view because the the there wasn't any record at that time so it's not quite easy and that's why the history of the Bantu is quite controversial, of course, when it comes to that argument. And so let's just look at the little thing that I have. We will be looking at the origin, then we look at the spread of the Bantu as well. So by the end of our lesson, you should be able to identify the origin of the Bantu, okay? The origin of the Bantu, and then we should also be able to discuss some of the major reasons that led to the spread of the Bantu. That led to the spread of the Bantu. So let's quickly go in there and look at that. Now, when we look at the Bantu people today, we can find them in Central Africa. Some are found in uh, Southern Africa. Others are found in the eastern part of Africa, which means that the Bantu. Uh, spread across Africa in general. So let's introduce ourselves to who the Bantu are. Now who are the Bantu when we say a Bantu? We are saying that a Bantu is, uh, the word Bantu means what people and and it is the plural of what Muntu which means a person. So Muntu means a person and Bantu means people which then means that the, the Bantu, if you say Bantu, we are, I mean, we are literally referring to um, people. Now, the term Bantu actually is is applied to over 400 or more languages, and, and, and those languages included Luganda, which is spoken in Uganda, Kikyu, of course, which is spoken in Kenya, Kiswahili, spoken in um, Tanzania, Shona, spoken in Zimbabwe. There are quite a lot of the languages which uh, are termed as Bantu languages and these are quite example of some of these um, languages but there are more to that about 400 or more of course the languages and that's a Nairobi guy Kikyu from the tribe of Kikyu as you have seen in your shots over here dressed very fine gentleman so now we know the a, a little about the bantu and take notice that the bantu even though it's 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 it's, it's used to refer to some group of people some tribes 
it 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 also has more than 400 languages in there so let's go and look at the origin of the bantu and this has been a uh, contentious uh, 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 theory there are so many theories with regards to the origin of the bantu there are so many theories but the uh, our knowledge of the bantu uh, origin comes from a linguistic source so through linguistics we we we, we were able to trace or historians were able to trace the origin of the Bantu people. Linguistic source in the sense that the languages spoken in Central and uh, Southern Africa are somehow similar. Okay, they're somehow similar. It looks more or less like th that of the Akan people in Ghana, whereby the Akan people have a similar language, a similar language amongst the Akan. And so that is somehow the 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 information is gotten from a linguistical source and so let's quite look at that now of course greenberg a, ling a linguist for instance of course greenberg of course according to greenberg he says that the area south of the middle benua river in eastern of course eastern nigeria was the original home of the Bantu and this actually uh, this tradition you know raised so many many comments on my comment section the last time with people like um, Vidian Sodalati and then Sizani Meng who actually sends in Meng who actually of course uh, entered into a wide argument about the origin of the Bantu but from the comments that I read uh, the last time, most of them were trying to say that the Bantu, uh, of course, the Benue of Kor River is somewhere found in the uh, somewhere southeastern Nigeria and then west Cameroon. And the southeastern, of course, Nigeria and the westward Cameroonian uh, area region. And as you have seen here, the map over here as you have seen and then there is one another here over this area or this portion and this is where they started then the spread came through all right the Najwa river and the original ancestors of the of the bantu are referred to as proto bantu so anywhere you come across the word proto bantu we are actually referring to the original people the aborigines uh, of the of the Bantu, the original people, they are what we refer to as the Bantu, the ancestors, Proto Bantu. Lord. Now, it was from this place that the, the Proto Bantu dispersed gradually to occupy the whole of, of what is now Bantu Africa. So, if you look at the map here, the whole of this area is what we refer to as the Bantu of Africa because it is inhabited by the Bantu, quite a number of ethnic groups that are actually inhabited in this area. So they spread from here, as you have seen, to other parts of the of Africa. And in the course of their spread, they actually came into contact with some indigenous people like the Pygmies and the Zosi, uh, Zosi people in South Africa. And somehow, somehow, they assimilated the, the cultures of these people that they came across in their, in their expansion or in their movement from this area where the southern east of uh, Nigeria and southern of Cameroon or from the from middle of the Benue of Kor River, they actually came into contact with these people. So let's look at some of the now when 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 they were spreading from this area they spread in badges they actually uh, left the area in badges right they actually left the area in badges so let's look at let's look at the spread of the area let's look at how they spread sorry for that little um um itches 
now in their spread from this area they didn't go at once okay they spread in 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 batches and it is believed that of course uh, a stream of migration moved east by 1000 bc and uh, was creating a major new population uh, center near the great lakes of east africa where a rich environment supported a dense population all right now others also moved somewhere until the 400 bce they actually began to move somewhere from west africa somewhere in 1000 bce uh, although other of course models or traditions says earlier they moved earlier than that but of course the some of them have, uh, i mean followed the coast and the major rivers of congo system uh, southward reaching central angola by around 500 bce and further east the bantu speaking communities had reached a great you know uh, central african uh, rainforest and by 500 bc they also pioneered the groups uh, for pioneering groups had also emerged in the savannah to the south in what are now the the, the democratic republic of congo angola and zambia another stream also migrated and 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 that is how they actually migrated from this area uh, of course the southeastern part of Nigeria and also of course the southeastern part of Nigeria and west of course Cameroon they moved and so in conclusion all what we can say about the origin of the Bantu is actually that they actually came from West Africa originated from West Africa and then uh, uh, I mean gradually they moved to other areas to settle and as you have seen in the map what we call the Bantu Africa today. So let's quickly look at the the reasons. Yes, in a, in in the in the earlier uh, video that I did, I stated overpopulation as being a cause for the uh, a reason for the spread of the Bantu from West Africa to other parts of Africa East and then of course the Southern Africa. But some of course comment where that uh, it it is it is not proven that overpopulation was part of the reasons for the spread of the bantu however um since it is not proven we can't also uh, 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 say it is false it's just that it is not proven but that is what we have in our historical books some books have that maintain the overpopulation at the niger benue area led to the spread because of the rainfall that you know came in that area that attracted a lot of people to come there so as time of course went on the place became to dry because they were not getting enough you know uh, enough room for for their animals and so some of them of course the proto bantu began to move southwards to african mainland okay then also the suitability or the attraction of the equatorial forest uh, equatorial forest was also uh, at the, it also attracted the, the proto bantu to that area because in that area they could get a uh, patches uh, they could get of course game the area provided them with game while the marshes and the rivers also provided with them with what fishes they could also get some patches of what of savannah in that area the area again contained timber uh, timber of course the resources and other uh, uh, for resources that they, they they could use to build canoes and all of that and so the environment in the equatorial forest was suitable for the proto bantu and so some of them also migrated from west africa to settle in those areas as we have seen them there let's move on to the next one the, the knowledge of iron working so the the proto bantu again gained the knowledge of iron of course working through the katanga of zar and the indigenous population of east africa uh, they learned how to 
uh, make, I mean, they learn how to use iron in making tools and other implements for farming and for defenses and war purposes. And and these were learned from the indigenous people that they came across on their on their on their migration or during their expansion. Some of the people that they came across, the indigenous people, they learned from especially the Katanga of Zai in Congo right now, and then also uh, some from East African of course, population. So that with the iron uh, technology, they were able to make tools that they used in in defending and also in farming. So it it, it made things quite easier for them. So they settled quite quickly in eastern and central and south southern of course africa then the other one is the introduction of southeast asian food crops into africa so the coming of the southeast asian food crops also influenced the movement of the band to southwards and eastward crops such as banana and kukuyam of course that they call taro were introduced into east africa by the indonesian immigrant who had had contact with the east african people because these east african people were trading or had a long of course distance trade with the indonesian people the people in china and all of that so with the introduction of these south east east asian food crops like banana and taro uh, it attracted some of the bantu people to also move and so the new crops soon then became the staple uh, of course food crop for the bantu living in in the forest and it must also uh, be known that as the bantu began to chase the south east asian food crops it it also resulted in population explosion and all these are theories that people think that uh, actually happened since uh, people began to chase then definitely there will be that population explosion because a lot of people will now come in there so it is not out of place or out of context if people say that overpopulation played a major role in that so, so with this i think i bring the class to an end and uh, you can have this of course try work identify the proto uh, bantu state whose people speak the following languages so we have kq we have luganda we have shona then we also have an of that question which came in 2012 that states any four reasons that accounted for the migration of the bantu i hope that uh, when you meet these questions with the help of this short uh, of virtual lesson you would be able to do that thank you very much for your time Subscribe and recommend for your friends in other schools. Thank you very much. Bye.